Today with Joseph Prince. We want to preach the Word because the Word builds faith. If you do not know what God has for you, you cannot lay claim on it. Amen? So years ago, God says, lay claim on the fact that my son is at the Father's right hand. Amen? At my right hand. And whatever he is, you are. As he is righteous, so are you in this world. Praise the Lord. Thank God for all the testimonies. We give all the glory to the Lord Jesus alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And uh, you know, every time we share uh, the testimonies, we just want you to see the effect of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because some people think it's only working in Singapore among the church members. But the gospel is the gospel for the world. Amen. Amen. It has the same results all over the world. And uh, that's what we want you to know, that we believe that this ministry was raised to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me say it more radically. I believe that we are going to be part of the movement of the late, the latest uh, reformation that God's going to raise all over the world. Amen. Just like during the Martin Luther days, amen, there was a great movement of the Spirit in restoring the truth of justification by faith. Amen. So amen. we believe there's another greatest and the last day move of restoring this truth once again. That truth is lost. That truth has been lost. And uh, in many churches even, in many circles, in many denominations, in many um, um, parts of the world where Christ is preached, but it is always like there's an apology towards uh, justification by faith. You will say like, yeah, you are righteous by faith, but we must not forget works. Yes, but, yes, but. And our revelation of righteousness by faith is not so strong anymore. But I believe God is uh, restoring that truth once again. And this time, whenever God restores, it's always greater in power, greater in its uh, dimensions. Praise the Lord. We, are, we thank God we are part of the end time gospel revolution. Amen. Grace revolution. Amen. Amen. All over the world. People are going to find out that God is a good God. Amen. That this God loves you so much that He sent His Son for the sole purpose of dying for your sins. Amen. And remember, God loves His Son. God loves His Son so much that God opened up the heavens to him when he came up from the Jordan River and said, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. No one pleased the father as much as our Lord Jesus did. And yet, this son of his love, and that's the phrase from the Bible, the son of his love, he gave up for you and I. Why? Because he loved you. Amen? No one else can take your place. The best person on earth, the most so-called Moral person can never take your place in substitute at the cross for your sins. It must be someone who is sinless, someone who knew no sin, did no sin. In him is no sin. It must be someone who is a human being because God cannot die. Yet at the same time, the quality of his blood must be eternal. That's God's kind of blood. Amen. If God takes on human flesh, what will he be like? And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. 100% God. He never laid aside His deity. And 100% man when He came to earth. Do you know that right now, in the center of the universe, at the right hand of the majesty on high, is a human being. A glorified human being. One of us is there at God's right hand. He represents us there. Think about it. A lot of people, when they think about Jesus at the Father's right hand, they think of God being at the right hand, God the Son being at the right hand of God the Father. No, you must think of Him when He's there. When He came down, He represented God. But when He's there, He's representing man to God. Think of Him there as man. And whatever He is, you are. His position is your position. All that He is, you are. All that He has, you have. Only one point, one area that you and I can, cannot possess in Him is His deity. All right, is His deity. We are not God. 
Okay, that's the only area. But whatever God did to him on the cross is what God did to us. Jesus carried our sins. And not only carried our sins, he carried us, that part of us, the old man, the sinful nature. Because when man sin, that sinful nature is already there. It, the, the cancer of sin spread through man. In his blood, it can be seen, right, that sin is in the blood. And that's why it, it manifests in disease, deformity. In heaven, there is no sickness, there is no disease, there's no deformity. So sin is in the blood. And that's why when you have children, they don't have to be taught how to lie. Sin is in their blood. But there's a beautiful verse. I'll cleanse their blood. Amen. And I believe being born again, your blood is cleansed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you battling a medical condition or a frightening diagnosis? Learn how you can receive your healing breakthrough with this special bundle from Joseph Prince, featuring his sermon series, My God, My Healer, in the Healing Scriptures book. You will discover how deeply our Lord Jesus loves you and wants you healed and whole. Yours for a gift of any amount today. When you request a resource, you're helping us bring the gospel of grace to even more people who need to experience the love and power of our Lord Jesus in their lives. Get these faith-building healing resources today. Offer available to U.S. and Canada residents only. So the Bible says he has redeemed his church with his blood. Take heed that you feed the flock of God whom he has redeemed. No, God is a subject here whom he has redeemed with his blood. So that blood and God, that means royal blood. It's not any just blood, any blood. It is the blood of God's Son that redeems us. Amen? So he has been fully God, fully man to die for our sins on that cross. As man, he died, he took our place. And even that part of us that loves to sin is finished off at the cross. Now, it might not be, be so in our experience, our sense, our feelings, but it is so to faith. Amen? Faith says what God sees. Faith says amen to whatever God says. So when God looks at you, God does not see you in your sin. God sees you in your righteousness in Christ. Amen? So never let the world define you. And you don't define you, all right, based on your own failures, experiences, shortcomings. Don't even define yourself based on your successes. Because if you define yourself by your success, then it only lasts as long as that success lasts. What are you when you lose your position? What are you when you lose that job? What are you when you lose that fame or fortune? Never tie your definition of who you are with all these things. Let God define you. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a son of God. Son of Abba. Amen. Son of His love. Praise the Lord in Christ. And as He is, as that man is, as that glorified man is at the Father's right hand, so are we in this world. Amen. Amen. Woo, praise God. If we go back home right now, we are happy. Amen. So, some years ago when I saw this and I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, Son, lay hold on it. Lay hold on it. As in everything in the Christian life, it works by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You go to uh, uh, Europe, Right, the, the means of, of, of transaction there is through your euro currency. Amen. You go to UK, right, it is the British pound. You go to uh, um, India, it is rupiah, right? You, rupee, sorry, rupee. Rupiah is Indonesia, okay. So different parts of the world have different currency. The kingdom of heaven operates by faith. Amen. Show God your faith and you receive what you need from Him. Amen. So faith, without faith, God has ordained it that way. Faith, without faith, is impossible to please God. Amen. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And that's where it all starts. Amen. So we want to preach the Word because the Word builds faith. If you do not know what God has for you, you cannot lay claim on it. Amen. So years ago, God says, lay claim on the fact that my son is at the Father's right hand. Amen? At my right hand. And whatever He is, you are. As He is righteous, so are you in this world. Amen. And I said before, if it said, if the verse says 
that word in 1 John says, as if it said as Jesus was, past tense, it'll be good enough. Right? Imagine Jesus in the Gospels, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers. That was Jesus was. Right? That'd be good enough to be like Him then. But it's not as Jesus was. It is as Jesus is, the ascended, the risen Christ, glorified at the Father's right hand. As Jesus is, so are we in this world, not when we die, in this world. And I believe God's Word. So God said to me, start believing. What, what, what is it that you need? So I start preaching. If you have uh, depression, belief, is Jesus having depression right now? Of course not. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. Free from that depression. Amen? Is Jesus righteous? Is Jesus ever concerned that He's going to be out of fellowship? Don't forget, the same body of Jesus that bore your sins at the cross. No one born so much sins as Jesus did. When you think about it, at the cross, He bore the world's sin upon His own body. At the cross, in a matter of a few days, when He walked into heaven, where are all your sins? It's the same body. Where are your sins? Gone. It's a perfect work. I say it's a perfect work. Where are your sins today? Gone. Why? Because your sins were on His body. Understand that. Your sins were on His body when He was at the cross. Three days after that, He rose from the dead, went back to the Father, amen, sprinkled the blood, and where are your sins? Gone. Amen. The Bible says it like this, having purged our sins, He sat down. Amen. amen. So we start saying, right, as Jesus is, whatever you need, amen, you're, you feel like you are, you are having problems with your memory, say, Jesus, does He have a memory problem? No. He, he, he remembers everything perfectly. In fact, there's a phrase called the mind of Christ. Amen. The mind of Christ. When God first made man, God made man with his mind beautiful and perfect. Adam could name all the animals and imagine all the species of the different animals in, animals in the world. God brought them to him and he named them. And imagine how many species there are in the world. How many varieties of animals there are in the world. And then he can, and different sizes, right? He can go back to the first one that he named after thousands have passed by and he remember them once again. Amen. We sometimes look at each other, all right? And we say, no, you look familiar. What's your name? Amen. And it happened to be one of your family members. All right. <laughs> so that's a problem. So if that's a problem, you say, as Jesus is, with a perfect mind, the mind of Christ, so am I in this world, in my mind. Amen. Now, Everything your flesh will say, because the, the world and the flesh does not like the way of faith. You will say, you're talking nonsense, you know, this cannot be, that kind of thing and all that. And you know what? Forget all that. Amen. Because that is the way of the world. The world says, unless I see it, unless I experience it, I will not say it. God's way is that, believe what I say, declare it. Amen. As if it is so. Because it is so. As far as God is concerned, it is so. Amen. So you start declaring that. And I remember uh, the first lady in our church broke through when she was diagnosed with uh, uh, breast uh, tum uh, cancer or breast tumor, right? There was a tumor there that was uh, sus suspected to be cancerous. And uh, when she received the report, she came up to me. And uh, in those days, uh, I would be hanging around uh, in front and she would come to me and, and she showed me the, her, her report, all right? And she wrote across it, does Jesus have lumps in his breast? As Jesus is, so am I. I'm free from it. Yeah. All right, she went back for the next checkup, completely gone. Yeah. And that precipitated a, a, literally a revolution of healing in the same area among women in America, especially when they heard this testimony. So it's like the first one broke through and the rest followed. Yeah. So church, our authority is the Word of God. Amen? Yeah. This Word that you hold in your hand, the Bible is your authority. Not any denomination, not any church. Listen, we can also even look at church history for lessons, okay, for, to see how the, the, the church was back then. But we cannot use church history as authority. This is our authority, the Word of God. And what I'm going to share today is uh, something that I feel that... Uh, uh, has happened to the body of Christ. Now, I will not preach this in the natural. I will not preach this because it will invite 
uh, a lot of criticism. It will invite a lot of uh, people who are, who are people who are just out to uh, get me. Anyway, they are always around one. You know, God bless them. Amen. I take communion for them also sometimes, right? And, uh, but I bless them. I bless them. Sometimes I pray that God will not do anything to them. Amen. Because, uh, you know, we got to deal with them in love and mercy because I really believe they are sincere, right? But of course, sincerely wrong, lah. you know? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm just like you, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, preaching something that caused people to, you know, criticize and, uh, you know, get canceled. Uh, you know, the kind of today's lingo, right? The world, you don't like you, only they cancel you. Rewrite history, you know? <laughs> Imagine history can be rewritten. <laughs> That's funny. What I thought, something happened, something happened already. You know what I'm saying? But you can rewrite history. Amen? And people want to cancel you and all that. Just that I think that you must be powerful enough to cancel someone. Because in the first place, you didn't give birth to him, and then you didn't give him the ministry, you didn't give him the anointing, and you didn't give him the, the blessings and all that. How can you cancel him when God gave him all these things? Yeah. I think there's a saying that says, when God opens a door, no one can shut. Yeah. I think today's vernacular will be, what God has written, no one can cancel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? So, but I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it anyway. All right? And, and it's something to do with uh, my concern when I look at the young people today, especially a whole new generation that have not heard the, the teachings that I grew up with that has blessed me so. You know, in fact, right now you are living in a miracle. If you look at this uh, 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 amazing Star Performing Arts Center, right? This whole center here was nothing. This place was just vacant. Amen. I, I forgot what, what buildings, small buildings they were here, right? But definitely not the star that we have today. And you take it for granted. And you say like, Pastor, I, the reason I, I cannot uh, uh, believe in faith and all that is because I'm someone, I must see it, then I believe it. You know something? This started with faith. Long before, now you say you experience it. Now you can see it. Now you sit in it. But it was actually nothing except for faith. Amen? It wasn't easy because at the time, if you look at all the, the odds against us in the natural, amen, in Singapore, land scarce Singapore, amen, every voice is saying it's impossible to find a, a place that sits like this. But somewhere in my heart, I said that my eye is on the Lord, amen. When the Lord created Singapore, He knows what it's going to be like. Amen. We have a need for our people to have a bigger place. Amen. Not just building a place for the sake of building it. Amen. But we need the place. And I'll tell you something, we didn't have the money for it. Yeah? But we, God raised the money for us. Amen. Amen. God provided for us. Amen. Supernaturally. Now, if you think about it, it's, it's not easy. As, as, as pastor back then, um, I remember that... Uh, the, the ones that were appointed, the leaders in, in, in my church and some of the business people that were appointed in order to look into all this place and all that, when it was just an idea, they have a very easy job. Though it appears very hard for them, right? Because they say this, Pastor, we only want to know one thing from you. All right, before we pursue for this. Before we pursue this. Every, every juncture they come to me, shall we go for this? Shall we go for that? We just want to know one thing from you. Is this God? You know, even my wife asked me, you sure? Is this God? Amen? The lawyers would ask questions from our leaders, is this God? <laughs> all right? So every, and, and they all bring back the question to me, is this God? Now, that is one wonderful way to be stress-free, to hear this question every month, all right? Is this God? Are you sure this is God? If this is God, we go for it. All right? Very easy, right? If this is God, we go for it. Why don't you find it's God? So everything converged on me, all right? For the first time, I felt the pyramid was inverted. At least, you know, the pastor and the leaders and all that, all, you know, all the way down, it filled it down. This was inverted and I'm right below. Shh! I felt the weight. Good thing I survived through it by the grace of God. No, God was faithful, amen? And, and um, so I told myself, I really have to hear God. I really have to hear God. Because the amount of money that I'm going to 
uh, trust God to provide for us and our people will believe and, and provide for, cannot be a failure, cannot fail, all right? We cannot, you know, start something halfway and give up. Like Jesus mentioned, someone built a building and he's not able to finish it. So it's, it's got to be God. It's got to be God. There's a lot of naysayers at the time. Amen. There are people who didn't believe we'll do it, that we can do it. Some people believe that we should not do it. But the whole thing the, for the place is just functional. The people come together, amen, to worship the Lord in a place where they can be not forsaking the assembling. Amen. So it wasn't meant for you to watch from home, actually. It's meant for you to come here. Uh, amen. It's meant for you to come here, be together. You know, the Bible talks about, and they came together in one place. So the idea of not forsaking actually is a physical gathering coming together. All the more, the Bible says, as you see the day approaching. There's something about us. You know, the Bible says the devil comes like a roaring lion, seeking home he may devour. You know the, the, what a roaring lion does? You know what, how, how the Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion, he comes. If you, if you look at all, I, I love to watch, uh, you know, those uh, Nat Geo kind of documentaries and all that. You watch a lot of those animal stories, I mean like predators and all that, you'll find that the way, from what I noticed, the lions, they go really slow and they are very patient. And when they see a, a group of gazelles or uh, zebras and all that, they mark someone that is weak, all right? And then they take their time. They follow the herd. They don't attack. They never attack, right? They never attack when the herd are really strong and together. They attack when the herd is confused or they leave behind a straggler who is injured or whatever. They wait. They wait until you are out of fellowship. You are isolated when you are alone. So when you think about it, the analogy that the, the Holy Spirit used, Satan like a roaring lion, seeking home he may devour. There's safety in being together physically. There's something, I can I explain it? Something spiritual, something that's a divine protection. Have you noticed the, the Gadarene demoniac, the most demonized man in the Bible? The Bible used this phrase of him. He was alone. He was alone. You know, I, I can't begin to tell you that there are forces that's beyond the physical. When people are alone, they think crazy thoughts. When they are alone, they have a lot of depression. That's when depression reigns in their minds. But when you're together, maybe depression is trying to come in. You said something that just broke it. Amen. Amen? Sometimes you don't even have to say something. I'm just in the presence of God's people and something about their spirit, because the Holy Spirit in them, lifts me up. I'm not sure I heard God, but someone said something and I say, there's no way he knew what I'm going through. And what he said confirmed what God said. There's... The Bible says, there I command, God says, the place of unity, the place of gathering, there I command my blessing forevermore. Amen. So is this what you're going to preach, Pastor Prince, that's caused a bit of controversy? No, no, no. Number one, it's, it's going to cause a lot of controversy. <laughs> right? And it is this, whilst I agree, whilst I agree that, that there are extreme teachings Okay, and, and uh, erroneous teachings on prosperity. Let me tell you this. It is a valid and right teaching that God is restoring in the last days. Amen. Just like God restored the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that wasn't in the time of Luther. Luther didn't talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and, and uh, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit being restored. It wasn't for his day. But in church history, there's a progressive restoration, a progressive restoration. Prosperity is something God is restoring in these last days, together with healing. Amen. And it's caused such controversy. Now, I'm not for the extreme. Listen, the extreme is what the Bible draws the line. All right, beware of covetousness. You know what's covetousness? Greed, selfishness. I mean, making money just for yourself. Amen. No, the Bible says from the start, God told Abraham, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. In other words, God knows if He can get blessings through you to other people, He will get blessing to you. Amen. He can trust you for that. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.